Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Craig Malkin. I am a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School and also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, which is devoted to helping you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all your relationships. Today, I'm going to be talking about whether or not there's a narcissism epidemic. If you like my videos, remember to subscribe by turning the notification bell on and definitely like and comment so that I can generate more conversation like this. The idea of a narcissism epidemic started with the book titled The Narcissism Epidemic by a researcher named Jean Twenge, who took a mass of data on narcissism, really narcissistic trait or trait narcissism, and used it to argue that narcissism was increasing and it had reached an epidemic level. And in order to unpack that a little bit and even understand what it's supposed to mean, you have to go back to what the idea of an epidemic is. And of course, you can't have an epidemic without an illness. So the first tangle that we get into is that the vast majority of that data was based on trait measures like the narcissistic personality disorder. They weren't used, they weren't even designed to try to determine whether or not somebody had a diagnosis of pathological narcissism. So it's a dubious conclusion to reach that based on that trait data, we have an epidemic of narcissistic personality disorder. In fact, you can't really do that. The other problem that we run into is the conflation of narcissism and narcissism as a trait. It's a defense, it's a survival strategy in and of itself. It's not a disorder. That's why there are books written on disorders of narcissism, and that's why we have this category of pathological narcissism, which is narcissistic personality disorder. So if you're talking about just narcissism in general, again, we can't really refer to that as an epidemic. So this is one of the problems, but there are other problems that it introduces. One of the big problems is that the distinction that Twenge was arguing for in suggesting that there was a narcissism epidemic was between generations. She looked at generation me, she called them, this is millennials, and compared them to say boomers and saw an increase on some really answers to some questions on the narcissistic personality inventory. And on the basis of that, this is how she decided that, that we were seeing an increase in narcissism well, the problem is as soon as other researchers went in and looked, the increase was, first of all, barely two points. And to put it in perspective, the difference between generations of two points, uh, when you compare it to there's some differences in race that are larger than that. And naturally, no one is running out and writing a book on who's the most narcissistic race with good reason, because the two point difference even if it is statistically significant, in some cases it is, that's just a mathematical definition, doesn't mean it's important. And again, if you put it on par with differences between other groups, it is extremely insignificant and unimportant. So th there's that problem. So yet another problem is what questions were being asked, because when researchers went back and they looked more closely at what these point differences were coming from, it was from answering questions in the affirmative, like I'm a natural born leader, or I'm an important person. And the I'm an important person endorsement really came straight from the self-esteem movement where people were filling out in workbooks saying I'm an important person. The idea of the researchers who put all this together and then put it in curriculum in schools is that it would boost people's self-esteem and that would lead to all kinds of great outcomes. It didn't boost their self-esteem, but people were more likely to overly endorse those statements. Thing is, it taps into a factor of on the narcissistic personality inventory called leadership authority, which only correlates with positive behaviors. So in answer to the question, is there a narcissism epidemic? It doesn't appear to be based on that evidence. But then the other one, and this came out on Twitter recently, people keep referring to this NISARC study from 2008, 2009, that showed that narcissism had increased to six percent overall, seven in men and something like four in women, when it's always been traditionally at one percent. Now that would be evidence of a narcissism epidemic because that is evidence of an increase in a pathological narcissism diagnosis. 
unfortunately, what happened is that census workers collected the data, not trained clinicians, and they overreported everything. Depression was high and anxiety was, everybody was diagnosed with everything. And this was particularly the case with personality disorders, not just narcissistic personality disorder. So some other researchers went back and they used clinicians, they went back through the data and they determined that all of the diagnostic rates, the prevalence rates had to be adjusted back down and they all went back down, including narcissistic personality disorder went back to the historically around the world finding of 1% prevalence. So no, there doesn't appear to be evidence of a narcissism epidemic and, or an epidemic of narcissistic personality disorder. Again, you can't really talk about a narcissism epidemic because narcissism itself is not the disorder. So why does this matter? Well, it matters because it feeds into this feeling that pathological narcissism is encroaching on every single part of our lives and social media, politics, but it's always been in politics. I could do a whole nother video on that. Most presidents and politicians rank higher on narcissism than the average person. It doesn't mean that they have a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder, but it feeds into this general fear. And then people start looking at normal selfish behaviors, lapses in decorum, and they see this as pathological narcissism or the red flags go off. Oh, this is a, a narcissist when they're actually much more reliable, deeper ways of determining if there's some kind of predictor of pathological narcissism early in a relationship. And I, I've, I've done videos on that and I can do another one if, if you like. So the, the problem is it creates a lot of fear mongering, a lot of confusion, a lot of noise out there. And this noise actually continues. So there is no narcissism epidemic. I think what does happen is that there is more opportunity for people who are narcissistic, extremely narcissistic, to have louder megaphones. That's what social media does. But if you look at what's going on, it's always the same loud people. And this is pretty typical of the research on narcissistic traits anyway. The more narcissistic someone is, they tend to rise to the top in leaderless groups. And how else would you describe social media? So, you know, breathe easy, keep an eye on the factors that I recommend that you keep an eye on in term determining health and relationships and even health in yourself. And that is, are you relating in a securely attached manner? If you do that, narcissism can't spike out of control because they, they work at odds with other, one another. You can't own vulnerable feelings, express them in relationships, relate and connect in mutual caring and connected fashion if you're extremely high in narcissism. And what's nice is that if you're keeping on those things in social media, in yourself, in your relationships, it brings the narcissism down anyway. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, comment so I can add to the conversation. Thanks.